My name is Stephanie, and I work at the Teen Zone on the second floor of the main public library in downtown Oakland. I'm here today because I want to show you a teen pop-up craft we have called Blackout Poetry. What I like about this uh, project is that it's good for young people who love wordplay and who love to find words in puzzles and that sort of thing. I also like the fact that it gives me one last chance to enjoy a book or a magazine I'm about to throw out before I actually toss it out. So here I want to show you the book I chose for this project. It's called What Do Sharks Eat for Dinner? And I also want to show you, if you don't mind coming, I'd love to show you the tool tray that I put together. It has uh, thick, dark magic markers medium-sized magic markers, and a super thin Sharpie, just in case I need to put a comma on after a word or capitalize a small letter. So these are some of the basic tools. I'll show you a few more in a little while. Also, you never know when you need whiteout. So here we go. We got uh, the page I chose is called Are Sharks Good Swimmers? So I, um, I went about penciling. As you can see, I penciled some of the words, but now I'm going to actually put them in green magic marker so you can really see it. A streamlined shape, a powerful fin, closing in on their prey. So these are some of the poetic words and phrases that I chose to use. Down below I have pectoral fins shaped like airplane wings. These are the type of of words that will create a vivid image of the subject matter, which in this case is sharks. I also want to show you that I played around with the title. At first I wanted to say, are sharks good? So I crossed out the word swimmers. But then when I realized all the poetry words that I ended up circling didn't really answer the question, are sharks good? I decided to go ahead and keep it basic. So now the title of the poem is simply going to be sharks. So I'm going to take a few minutes to cross out all the words that will not end up in the poem so that you can see the final results. So bear with me. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, I blocked out most of the words we're not going to use. Uh, it still looks a little sketchy. You'll notice the words that I circled are now mostly bordered by rectangular purple lines. I thought I was using blue, but... That's how it is with art. The blue comes out purple. So, um, another thing as I realized as I was doing this and picking just the right words for the poem is that sharks are pretty scary creatures. So, I cut out, I went to other parts of the book and cut out some of the more uh, benign looking sharks and I cut out borders. And so I want to show you, instead of just cutting out the scariest toothiest, scaliest shark I could find. I also cut out some rounded ones that are benign looking and have interesting eyes and ears and noses. So we're going to pepper the page with this at the very end. But first I'm going to show you I cheated a little bit. Rather than run out of my purple ink, I decided to border the page with the colors of the ocean. So I'm going to go ahead and put borders on this page um, to cover more of the words and not run out of ink. I'm going to put on the bottom border. And as you can see, I also cut out strips in the middle. So we're going to have strips in between the uh, paragraphs of the poem, or stanzas rather. And then we're going to be able to finally look at the poem and read it out loud. So I will be right back while I finish bordering. Okay, the poem is pretty much done. And as you can see, a lot of the words I circled ended up being long, wide, rectangular borders for the poem. I got the sharks on there, um, and hopefully they help draw interest to the page. So now I'm just going to read the poem. Sharks, a streamlined shape, a powerful fin through the water, closing in on their prey, 40 miles an hour, 
Skeleton made of cartilage, tough, rubbery, the same material that forms your ears and the end of your nose. Sharks must keep swimming, moving, or down they go. Pectoral fins like airplane wings. Huge liver filled with oil gives swimming an extra lift. Voila, there you have it, a blackout poem. Uh, please do go ahead and try this at home. And thanks for joining me. This is Stephanie from the Teen Zone.